Good morning and welcome to the Stalls TV Morning Show. I'm Zach. I'm Courtney. And I'm Josh. And today we're in our CAD Lab studio broadcasting for you live. We appreciate all of you that take time to join the Stalls TV Morning Show. And if you were here last week, we talked all about sales calls and really the sales call process. Mm -hmm. And that brought about a natural progression into our topic to get today, which is all about samples. So really, where to use samples as it relates to where in the sales process and really just ideas on how to create samples, what samples look good, what they sell, and the commandments, if you will, for sample creation for an apparel decorator. So as always, the Sauls TV morning show is live, so we would encourage your questions, and it's interactive, so we have our moderator mic'd up today. If you have a question, he'll direct that into us, and we'll answer it throughout the presentation. Absolutely. Um, but with that in mind... Let's talk all about samples. So what are some things uh, decorators should keep in mind uh, when they start to create samples to sell product? Well, basically, um, just like our five steps to sales call success, we came up with six tips for sales samples. So the first one is that appearance matters. Um, seems kind of obvious, but some people don't take the time to, to consider that, that your sample is actually representing your business. So the quality of the sample is representing the quality of the work that the customer can expect uh, from from their order. Yeah, so this isn't a situation where we should take our, our ruined garments or our right. garments that are slightly <laughs> crooked and say, oh, I'll use that as a sample because obviously it reflects our work. So it sounds basic, but um, I can't tell you how many times I've seen a sample and even something that somebody would wear out that represents their company yeah. um, that doesn't really reflect um, the quality that they're capable of. Yeah, absolutely. It's a a big problem. Good, good. Uh, Courtney, you're one of our marketing experts on here. So uh, as far as target marketing, we know that's obviously important. So when we come to samples, it shouldn't be any differently, correct? Correct. Yeah, I think um, you need to look at how targeted you want your samples to be, but um, definitely having some form of a target, whether it's um, creating one specific for that customer where you're actually using their logo, okay. that's one way to target it to where it's super hyper-targeted. Um, those, of course, you want to keep for your high-level clients or the ones that you think are worth spending the time and the money to create a designated sample towards. Um, and then, of course, having just a generic um, targeted sample set, which is one I'm a big fan of personally, um, one for schools, one for dance teams, one for corporate companies, um, different markets like that where you can show them different options. Okay, so specifically as you're creating your samples, um, just as you would create a marketing campaign to attract, let's say, sports uh, related customers, we would create a sports set, if you will, where right. when we're interacting with uh, sports type clientele, we would show them uh, different looks for jerseys and numbering and, and different styles that appeal um, to sports. Um, from, a, from a targeting perspective, I know that typically if you can show a customer's logo on the actual sample you're presenting to them, which is possible with heat printing, mm -hmm. um, you can do that on a sales call it's very much more likely to lead to a conversion. Yeah, I think it does. It helps people uh, visualize. I'm one of those people who kind of need to, to see it, to believe it. You can show me somebody else's logo and say, this is the finish that you're going to get. But until I see my logo there, that it's a big help for me. It helps people close me on stuff when they show me my logo on stuff. Yeah, and definitely don't show the uh, competitor's logo. Right. So, you know, it's not as big of a deal in, in high school athletics as it is really in the corporate world if you're selling to a corporate client and if it's Ford and you go in with a sample of the Chevy logo obviously that's a big no-no right <laughs> right or if it's uh, WVU and you go in with an Oklahoma State logo definitely a big no-no this week right but this week All right. Uh, yeah sorry a little shot there so um, so I have so far six tips for sales sample success appearance matters yep. um, target your samples and show the customers logo um, the next point I have here is simplified choice. Who wants to talk a little bit about that? I can start, and then you guys can definitely jump in. So uh, when it comes to simplifying choice, it's basically don't go in and say, here's these 20 different garment styles that you can choose from, uh, because there's a thing that Ted constantly writes about uh, on his blog that's mm -hmm. called the paradox of choice. So you have so many choices that we end up not making a choice, so then we'll set a follow-up sales call to narrow it down from 20 to 5, and then narrow it down from 5 to 2. It's just adding steps in the process. So if we go in with what is a good, better, best option, it makes the customer's decision a lot easier. And actually, if you, if you think about it, you're going to be deciding good, better, best on the garment. You'll be deciding good, better, best on the logo, good, better, best on the finish. So it can still get into uh, a lot of choices. Um, so going in with a, a, a recommendation that is targeted to the market 
and that has been successful for other customers is extremely helpful. Yeah, let's talk a little bit. I want to dive in a little deeper there about, um, so you have garment, you have finish, and you have logo, mm -hmm. uh, to name a quick three. So three times three times three, because right. you can quickly end up with 27 different choices, right. even with just operating good, better, best. So are you, do you think there's a logical progression that we should take customers through, or should we show finished choices? So there's literally three choices. This garment comes with this finish and this style. How, how do we work that? Uh, I think you can do it both ways, but I think um, actually going back to sales call success, I think a really good qualifying process is important to where um, we ask a lot of questions on the front end that lead us to where we want to go with the customer, and then we come back with the finishes and all of that kind of decided for them to where they're really only choosing from three different things. Obviously, uh, if a customer says, well, I want that finish on that garment, we can do that. Um, but if, if we do really good qualifying questions with what they're trying to achieve, like what are the important parts of the logo or what is color important to you or is the performance of the garment or the item that you're selling important, we can kind of narrow down and only give them three options total. Good, good. I get it. So we could tie up a lot of time in sample creation as we start to strategically think about customers, but we'll probably have a higher conversion ratio and it will be worth the time. Um, the other option is as you're creating these samples, obviously you want to catalog them some, some way. Right. So when you walk in, you can potentially reuse these samples, especially when it's not logo um, specific. Yep. Okay. So appearance matters, target your sample, simplify choice. And uh, I have improve opportunity as point number four, and this really deals with showing uh, complementary items. Do you want to speak a little bit to that? Yeah, so Zach talked a little bit about good, better, best, which is a good strategy, but I think a lot of people take that and then try to show them too many products. So being able to narrow down your choice to a, a package option or um, items that kind of work together and show their, op show their products that way. So um, in my opinion, the best way to kind of increase an opportunity or the, the sell, um, overall sale price of the customer is to um, actually package together items. So a t-shirt, a hoodie, a jacket, um, pants, maybe a bag, and show those all with that same logo, mm -hmm. um, whether you're going to show their logo or just a generic one, and hopefully be able to drive up the sale by showing all of your capabilities, which is definitely possible with heat printing. Good. And so no matter where in the process you are, um, whether it's a customer coming into your store to look at your display or you're going out to them, having those different types of items. Uh, one single consumer can only ha buy so many t-shirts on an order. Typically right. it's going to be one, maybe two, yep. you know, if there's different colorways, but showing shorts and pants and bags and hats and just expanding the selection. Um, at, it's kind of like, would you do you want fries with that? After you close that initial opportunity, would you want to pair some pants or would you want to pair a hat or a bag right. uh, with yep. that sale? Mm -hmm. um, so just including that in your sample process. Uh, the next point I have, uh, point number five in our six tips for sales sample success is preserve cost. Um, talk to us a little bit about what a virtual sample is and how yeah. a customer should utilize those. Yeah, absolutely. So a virtual sample is something that can come in really handy early in the sales process when you don't necessarily know which way they're going to go on your good, better, best, or maybe you are starting with six or 12 choices. Uh, it's really easy to use a software like cadworkslive.com uh, designer or even a CorelDRAW or Illustrator, whatever graphic software you're using to lay the logo on top of the shirt. And I know you had some uh, tips for where to find some of those yeah, uh, things to this, build that um, sample. Yeah, we do this pretty often here. We build sample sets and things that the different sales reps can use. And we'll actually go on um, the apparel sites. So some sites like Sanmar, Alpha Broder, Boxer Craft, they all have uh, model shots. And some of them, even like Sanmar, will have flat shots of the garment that mm -hmm. you can actually... Um, save down to your desktop as maybe the item number, the color of the shirt, and then import them in to your design software um, to be able to add the logos directly on it. And then it creates as close to a realistic sample as you can get so they can really envision their logo on that shirt at a low cost. Good. And we have all types of tutorials on, on CADWorks Live on Stalls TV that show you specifically how to create these virtual samples, mm -hmm. but it goes as far as incorporating um, textures and styles into the design to be able to apply that onto the garment. And a lot of times you can download these images, whether it's a sleeve print, yeah. a back print, whatever it might be. Yeah, and one of the other really good ways um, to do a virtual sample, now this would be uh, extremely early in the sales process, almost just to develop the interest, is to take a picture of every item order that you have and get that on your Facebook page, which serves as a virtual sample as well for other customers to come in and see the type of work that you're doing. That's a good point. Uh, once again, targeting by market, creating uh, folders or slideshows specific for sports clients, dancewear clients, whatever it might be and then cataloging uh, 
uh, your photos and samples in that way. Yep. Good. Okay, so preserve cost, use virtual samples if you're not using them already. It's a great way. Uh, make sure you go through the tutorial on stallstv.com to learn how to create those. It can really help you further really qualify a customer to mm -hmm. decide if it's worth a physical sample. And that's our last and final point is go the extra mile when it warrants it. And this means creating actual decorated samples for proven customers or quantified opportunities. So you can get really sort of tied up in just sample creation right. and not get an actual order out of it. Mm -hmm. So it's all about really identifying what's the size of this opportunity up front, or is this one of my valued clients that I know if I show them something, they're going to buy it. That's right. what it amounts to. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, again, sounds simple. Sounds like it can be extremely expensive. So you definitely want to target where you're bringing in those samples, especially on more expensive items that you're even running into some risk on decorating. Like we showed you the umbrellas. Uh, was that last week we showed how to decorate umbrellas? Yeah. Yeah. In one of our previous episodes. So um, just having that stuff on hand, uh, even if it doesn't end up being the customer's logo is helpful. Good. We've taken some of the top questions that people typically have about samples, but before we dive into those, let's go to some viewer questions that are coming in right now. Okay, Kenton would like to know, do you recommend doing a or for your um, sample? That's definitely one of the top questions I think we get on samples. It comes down a lot of the times to cost. Obviously, having a, um, a blank sample that's a full garment sometimes can get very costly. Um, so I think that's where we're looking at the maybe the good, better, best or your targeted samples. You may want to have a swatch book that's less expensive that goes out with um, your local reps if you have multiple sales reps and then maybe a display set at your sh uh, shop or your location that's full garments laying out. That would be my recommendation. What do you think? Uh, I think we're actually going to show you a couple different options here and then give you some cost estimates and let you decide. But I think, I think both can work. I think if you're highly targeted and the opportunity is very qualified and you've quantified it as a large opportunity, I personally think the garment that you're going to be decorating is the way to go uh, for a particular job. But to just show finishes and types of things that you can do, I think fabric bolts are fine. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a good point. I'm, I'm kind of gone with that as well. Um, when you really consider it, if you do all garments, I mean, a t-shirt's a t-shirt, but the reality is that shirt can go out of style and you can be having to undergo this sample project every year, every couple of years. Mm -hmm. So the actual fabric panels have a much more uh, longevity. Yeah. And then you can sort of supplement those with uh, decorated actual garments for sales opportunities. Mm -hmm. All right, let's take another question from our viewers. Okay, Karen has a two-part question. She wants to know if you can add JPEGs of Stoll's glitter flake, glitter, and hologram vinyl to use in virtual flyers. And she also would like to know what program do you recommend for creating a virtual sample flyer and or an order form? Okay, great questions. Um, so yes, there are JPEGs available of the different heat transfer films. Let's start there. Mm -hmm. So um, we've emailed the Glitter Flake JPEGs out to folks before. Soon we'll be adding a resource section um, to Stalls TV. So as our producer here is keeping notes, we'll want to add the note to add color swatches that are downloadable in all the heat transfer films. We can certainly do that. Mm -hmm. And just including a little square sometime of color choice is easier than having to add it to the design. Yeah. And then the second part of the question was um, creating an actual uh, flyer or brochure. Mm -hmm. um, if you're not a designer, this may be a pretty archaic way to do it, but <laughs> it's a way I'm good at mm. is actually creating it within the context of a PowerPoint slide. Mm. Um, it gives you some basic uh, tools and backgrounds and layouts, and then you can actually export that as a, a PDF um, to email it uh, to your customer and build your pricing components and all of that. Yeah, one other way, d depending on the way that you're decorating, if you're using Transfer Express transfers, they actually have a tool built into their website. It's their Easy View Designer. You can load garments into that, put your graphics onto it, and export as a PDF actually with all of the order information uh, and the ability to take an order, I believe, uh, on that using that tool. So if you're using Transfer Express transfers, their Easy View Designer helps you do that. Good, good. I think we got all parts of that question, hopefully. Um, let's take another one from our viewers, if there's any more. Oh, uh, well, there's a comment first from uh, Kimberly. She just says that uh, she loves the concept of virtual samples. And in her understanding of it, sales is a marathon, especially if you're working with a, a corporate client. You, know, you just need to stick with it, and obviously the, re the rewards will come. Uh, but Kenton is now asking um, a, a kind of a follow-up. Is it, What would be the easiest way to make that sales flyer that you were talking about? Good. And, and hopefully we've, we've answered some of those questions, whether it's a PowerPoint or whether 
It's through a design tool like EasyView from Transfer Express. Those are a couple different ways. Mm -hmm. Of course, you could always lay that out um, as well in whatever design program you're familiar with or get a graphic designer on board uh, to sort of help. And you sometimes with that. Excel just works. If you're just looking for an order form, you can insert images into it. Um, Microsoft has templates for order forms that you can customize as well. Good. Um, so a lot of content to cover. Um, today. So I think I'm going to come back to some of our top questions since we had some good ones from the audience. Mm -hmm. And let's um, step over to the heat press and show some ideas specifically for creating one style of sample that you may want to utilize in your business. Great. So as we head over here, I'm just going to um, talk a little bit about the sample process. So we've had some really good questions, but one question is always how do we display um, all the color options we have, all the finish options that we have to our customers, whether that be on a physical garment or a swatch book or a um, swatch fabric. One way that I've found um, that is useful is to be able to take the colors that you've chosen from maybe a swatch book. So I've actually gotten a um, color swatch chart here from Stalls. It's just the glitter flake colors. Um, it has about 40 different shades, but when I'm deciding on what product I want to use, I want to select colors that I either want to stock in my shop or that I think are going to sell well. Um, so I don't have to keep 40 different colors on hand or have a short turn time. So I'm going to load my garment on and show kind of how to display this um, for either a sales sample or a display sample that works. Just load my garment onto the heat press. And then I'm going to lay out my design. So we talked a lot about displaying designs by target market. This could be an example for maybe a dance school, um, laying out that design. And then if I want to choose a few different shades they can select from in my targeted sample, I can do so. Good. This is a great way. So these color swatch booklets you can request from stalls.com. Um, we're going to pair the glitter flake design with the glitter flake swatches. And uh, to Courtney's point, she's just going to lay out some of the top colors um, that you may want to offer in your shop, whether you know top sellers, silver, gold, pink, um, and then any school colors um, that, or team colors in your area, and then always a pop of fluorescence, right? Yeah, always a pop of fluorescence. You always want to keep your market in mind. So if you're selling to local schools, of course, you're going to put your school shades on the garment. Um, I'm going to sell to the dance school, so I want to put a couple of my fluorescent shades. And these are just the colors specifically that I'm going to stock. Um, and these will allow me to do the quick turn time, but I'm going to save these swatches off to the side, put them back together, and save them maybe as a premium option or just for additional colors if somebody asks for a specific color at Glitter Flake. I'm going to apply this for the recommended application at 320 for 10 seconds. And you can lay out your swatches however you really like, whether that's um, in a unique pattern or just kind of in a block style the way I've done it there. So I'll peel back the carrier. The swatches traditionally have a carrier on them as well if you're using one of the CAD Cut products. Go ahead and get those off there. If you don't have nails to peel back the carriers, if they're a little bit tight, you can always use an Easy Weeder or a... Uh, pair of twiz tweezers if you have them near your heat press. Good, yeah, and glitter really comes to life when you get that on a garment in front of a customer. Virtual samples are cool and you can kind of show it, mm -hmm. but the reality here is um, to show this on, a, on an actual garment um, is a big difference. Right, absolutely. Yeah, so being able to create these display garments, I'll pull this off so you guys can kind of get a see of how it looks. I can easily take this into a customer and say, this is the design I'm offering to your school. Here are some color selections that you have. There's more colors available if you want to um, order those as well. But if you're going to offer a custom color, of course, keep those swatches to the side and maybe offer a minimum um, order where they have to order enough to consume the whole roll that you have to purchase because you're not stocking it. Or just uh, make sure they're offering different color selections. Good. Any other questions, Joe, that have came in before we move on on the sample process? No, there's nothing at this time. So we've talked about um, how to choose color. What about sizing? I know we, we kind of discussed that a little bit earlier today, but when it comes to uh, a dance school or a football team being able to choose sizes, how many? How do you recommend that a customer um, or that a decorator offer that to a customer? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, if you're really serious about uh, decorating, a lot of people keep a, a stock of garments, and a lot of your suppliers actually have programs where they'll send you uh, garments, samples, they'll give you one sample every month or free samples, whatever it might be. But when it comes specifically to sizing and you have a large opportunity, whether that's a, a high school team or it could be a dance school, actually ordering in 
uh, one of every size and sending them to the school for the sale period for people to try on. I think that's a great way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't want to outlay the cash for all the different sizes, maybe every other size. So at least there's some perspective in adult and youth sizes. Mm -hmm. um, also with that, you can charge for those samples. You can require a deposit of $200 or whatever it might be that gets refunded ultimately when they deliver the samples back and, and place their order and use those as actual um, decoratable products. Um, another option for size, of course, if you don't want to go the physical sample route for a big sale, if it's just a small sale or a web sale, you could just take the size off the blank apparel provider site and typically they have all those specifications on how it's going to fit by garment. Okay. So that's one way to handle size. Now, we've, we've talked a little bit about um, decorating actual samples and creating looks for a, for a one-off sample or for something in display. So when you're setting up for display, uh, we want to give you some alternative methods. And behind us is this uh, wonderful uh, slat wall here. And this is one way to perhaps set up your store uh, for display or when you travel to pop something like this up and show on display. So you can see here that we have some different fabric panels. And this goes to the point of panels versus full garments. But you can easily come up with some interchangeable components. So if we had a customer coming in here that's a corporate client, we can load it up with those types of designs and styles. Mm -hmm. If we have a dance school coming into our store, we can easily flip out these panels and swap in different sizes. And I'll go more into depth on how to create these here in a moment, but they're very easy to create with just a simple grommet and twill material with some adhesive, and we'll talk a little bit about how to do that. But consider um, a slat wall, um, a grid wall, where you can hang up and display different things. Um, everything from, let's see, it's actually behind you, Zach, uh, like a waterfall rack can be easily interchanged into this type of system where you can start to integrate full garments as well as fabric panels so they're easy to grab, um, easy to show off throughout the sales process. So um, I definitely think a mix and match when you're setting up a retail space um, is a great way to go. And the cool thing about these panels is these can also travel to a client. If you have a sit-down meeting, if it's at a Panera Bread or something, mm -hmm. and you're going to sit down with a client, obviously you can't take this whole system. So you'd like to have a way to display this. So do you want to show our customers the flip book? Yeah, absolutely. Walk over here to our podium. And all the flip book is is basically um, pieces of fabric that have been uh, applied with a piece of twill here at the top, and then we grommet through it. And we have some wire that we picked up in a bar just for some stability that we throw into it. And basically you can sit in front of a customer and go through each finish. So not only are they being able to see the finish, but they can feel um, how the particular material that you're going to use is going to feel on the garment as well. So here we have some reflectives, here's some standard finishes. One uh, tip, as much as you try and remember the products that you decorate with maybe three, six months from now. You may forget what this is. So a handy tip is to just get some uh, labeling software and throw labels on the backs of your samples to where you remember what it is. Uh, you can also throw in some of the average cost. So you can say if somebody wants to add, if you want this finish, you can add $5 to your garment or this finish is typically $2 for a t-shirt or whatever, however your pricing is built out. But it's uh, very helpful to have these labels on the back, especially when you get a few months removed from creating the samples and you have a number of different books to show customers. Good. I know one question we always get, Zach, is if somebody wanted to create those fab fabric panels, is, that's not something they can just order. Is that something uh, that you'd can they just pick that up from a Joanne Fabrics? Um, you can buy a bolt of fabric and a pair of like crafting scissors and get a nice finish around the outside and, and cut all the way around, whether it's felt or polyester fabric or whatever it is that you want to be applying to. But yeah, you can walk into Joanne's or any other craft store and pick up bolts of fabric that are t-shirt material, that are uh, performance material, whatever it is that, that you're going to be applying to. Okay. And then Courtney, um, obviously we get a request um, like this a lot for customers to actually be able to order these fabrics and flip books. So we finally at least started down this process. You want to explain a little bit about the um, number book that's now available from Stalls? Yeah, so this is actually um, a pre-cut number book that shows um, some of the pre-spaced number options that you have for different sports. Baseball, softball, soccer are three of the available sports. But I think it's important to leverage these types of tools whenever you have them available to you because it's great to create your own custom samples. But of course, that takes time away from selling, from producing other garments. So if you have tools like these available, 
being able to purchase them, and it's got a ton of different styles um, that allow your customers to kind of flip through, choose the number style they want, um, and of course it has the um, different numbers displayed in the name so you can easily order them. They go 50 bucks a piece, so for $50 you've got the sample created for you and you've been out selling instead of spending all your time creating something like this. Yeah, so. you'll pay for it by landing one team with one of the new number styles available. Right. Well, that's yeah. a discount. If you pay yourself just $10 <laughs> an hour, you'd have way more than five hours in work to create this type of uh, right. book and display. So yeah. the idea of being able to buy it, not having to order all the roles and components to assemble it is great. And I think we'll be expanding on this idea. The feedback's been generally positive. So hopefully this is something you can jump on for, mm -hmm. uh, for team business. Um, any additional questions that have come in, uh, Joe, just before we try to recap and finalize here? Yeah, just to jump back to when you're talking about making uh, the virtual samples and things like that, uh, it was asked about, uh, you mentioned that Glitterflake images are available, but where do you find them? The, as far as the swatches, so the, the JPEG swatches, we can email those out to all the um, listening members, uh, viewers of the audience today, so we will email you a download, uh, it's a, just a Dropbox link, you can download the full Glitter Swatch um, library, and then eventually we'll add that as a resource on stallstv.com in the coming 30 days or so to expand it to all of the different products, since that's something that uh, viewers are wanting. Um, so, we hope this gives you a little bit of an idea of marrying samples into the sales process. Our whole goal is to help you sell more, help you grow your business and be profitable here at Stalls TV. And we share some of those ideas through the Stalls TV morning show. Now, a lot of us are getting ready to go on the road uh, from the office down to ISS Fort Worth. So we hope if you're in Texas or nearby to uh, the Dallas area that you'll join us at the Imprinted Sportswear Show in Fort Worth. It's issshows.com. Mm -hmm. I know on Wednesday, uh, you and I have a full day workshop. It's seven hours of hands-on. I know that uh, throughout the exhibit days, which would be Thursday through Saturday, mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of classes and we have a huge booth space there where you can actually come in, touch, feel some of these samples, and we'd love to meet you. So if you can make it to ISS Fort Worth, do that. If you can't make it, we're going to share it with them next week, right? Yes. We're going to review the ISS Fort Worth show on Monday. Some of the cool things that are happening, uh, what you may have missed in the stalls booth, and just kind of give you the show experience on a, on a Monday morning. So thanks for joining us this morning. If you want to continue the conversation on samples, we do invite you to do that at the Stalls TV forum, stallstv.com. Uh, there's a forum section. I believe it's in the top right-hand corner of the page. So we invite you to continue the conversation there. So I'm Zach. I'm Courtney. And I'm Josh. And thanks for watching the Stalls TV Morning Show.